Last time on Final Fantasy 16. You gave people magic, and it, it caused the blight, and you didn't mean to do it, but at that point you were kind of like, well, fuck. He doesn't want to admit that even though he created humans, they now rival him. Repent, and all shall be forgiven. What? Clive, my name is Clive. Even here, the light of the vessel's will cannot be quenched. I think we did it! Although I'm pretty sure Ultima isn't dead yet. We have to reach that crystal. Yeah. Then it's a good thing I have wings. And what of my wings? I would have words with Ultima. That's fair. <laughs> Greetings, my beautiful viewers. I am the Hunter of Comedy, and welcome back to Final Fantasy 16. We are... So close to the end of the game, my friends. Last time we actually fought Ultima, me and Joshua. He almost took over Clive, but Joshua was able to save him at the last second, which is great. And now... Dion is going to uh, fly us up to... Um, the giant crystal there where Ultima is. <sighs> and... Oh, hello, birdie. And we have to tell Jill she's not coming with us. This is not going to go well. She is not going to be happy with us. Come to wish on a star. <sighs> that might not be such a bad idea. Oh, no. This is it, Jill. You know what I have to do. Why well, I have to do it. There's no turning back now. This is where our journey was leading us. Where it will end, for better or worse. I could pray to Metia for you. But you'll be all right, won't you, Clive? You always are. I did promise we'd watch the moon together. Oh. I'll be waiting. Oh, this went better than I thought. I thought it was going to go really bad. I thought she was going to yell at me. I mean, I would have. <sighs> it's almost time. Better make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Yep. Now is time for all the quests. Search of a lost tome. Okay. A Vivian request. Something tells me this is no mere adventure story. Yep. Ooh, an inconvenient truth. <sighs> what is it this time, Torgal? Uh-oh. Torgal needs more. More than words, eh? Byron. Hmm? Clive, my boy! Rutherford informs me that we owe you our thanks. Hadn't intended for you to get involved, but such are the times we live in, huh? I would have done the same for anyone else. You're far too modest, Clive. You'd make a terrible nobleman. <laughs> but tell me, is the realm truly in as dire a state as Rutherford suggests? From what little I saw, you were right to be worried. <sighs> I suppose I should have expected the worst. But I was rather hoping the great and good of the realm might have things a little more under control. Alas, it seems that firm leadership is in short supply these days. And without it, the people are bound to lose their way. We must move quickly. But where do we start? True, the challenges that face us are many. But in my estimation, there are two key areas to be addressed before any other. The realm's armies and her larders. As you've seen firsthand, 
It's every man and woman for themselves out there. Certain cities have banded together to try and maintain some semblance of order, yes? But such cases are few and far between. And yet, the only remedy for the chaos that faces us is unity. A unity that transcends even the borders laid down by our ancestors. In short, if Storm does not stand together, she will fall apart. But how would one even begin to unite the realm? The armies, my boy. As I told you already, we begin by restoring order among the ranks of those sworn to maintain it. Sadly, I doubt I could convince even the lowliest gaggle of privates to dig a latrine together. But I do know someone the High Commanders have been known to listen to on occasion. Field Marshal Eugen Havel. I thought he was retired. He was, until an Akashic army tore through Randalar and killed most of the rank and file. There is no man alive more capable. Literally. And yeah. as luck would have it, I've already spoken with him on the matter. Of course you have. And he's agreed to help. On one condition. That he first speaks with you personally. Havel has always been a man of frustratingly rigid principle. And he has certain qualms about clasping arms with, well, with an outlaw. I extolled your many virtues as best I could, of course, but the old goat was adamant that he be allowed to appraise you in person. He don't mind, do you, my boy? Of course not. As long as chaos reigns, we will never build a better world. I'll do whatever it takes. And if the field marshal wishes to speak with me in person, then so be it. That's the spirit. I'll leave for Randalar at once. Would you send a Stolas? Of course. Rutherford is already in the Dalmechian capital. I'll have him tell Havel to expect you forthwith. Excellent. Thank you, Uncle. No. Thank you, Clive. Oh, Joshua has a quest. Oh, Clive. Joshua, what's wrong? And don't say nothing. It's... Not nothing. I've received word from Cyril. The Undying have found Father's will. Or something akin to it. His will? How? And where? In the crypt beneath Rosalith Castle. After Kupka was kind enough to drive out the Imperials, the Undying took the opportunity to recover what relics of the Duchy yet remained. And in the process of doing so, they found a letter from Father. I'm surprised anything survived down there. Cyril asked that I join him in Tabor at my convenience. I have been meaning to go, but... Would you join me? Of course. I want to know what's in that letter as much as you do. Very well. I am ready to leave when you are. Where there's a will. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Sid. Do you have a moment? By all means. It's my old master. Seems there's no escaping her. She found some way to send me a letter and something else. Records from a Waluda prison. Seems they were keeping a lot of bearers there. How did she come by such a thing? Finding bearers always was her strong point. And it seems the cells of Balmung Dark are full of them. Foreign captives. The masterless. Bearers no one would miss. And even better for her. Bearers with no one to look after them. When Ether started lapping at the walls, the jailers fled. Leaving the bearers to be liberated by whoever happened to come along next. Sid, I'd like to believe that I've earned your trust by now. And while I'm well aware that you've forbidden curse breakers from traveling to Walud, I can't let those bearers die in their cells. I'd rather risk shipwreck on the Shadow Coast than leave them to starve. We'll be needing the Enterprise if we're going to navigate the Narrow. Does that mean... I'm making an exception. But we travel together, and we stay no longer than we have to. Ash is an inhospitable place at the best of times. We save as many as we can, and we leave. Thank you, Sid. There was a name in the prison register. A name from my past, Chadwick. Another of my former master's protégés. A gifted soldier, and the closest thing I had to family. The thought of him held captive in that place. He must be very important to you. He was. Is. Then we find him. The entrance to the prison lies in the shadow of Ravenwit walls, just beyond the portcullis. We should head there as quickly as we can. I only pray there are still bearers alive to save. As do I, Doris. 
Nobody's tool. Sid, I was wondering if you could help me. It depends what with. A bearer, but recently freed from his bonds, is keen to join the Curse Breakers. As you know, the work we do is not easy, which is why we test every volunteer's suitability. I was hoping you could oversee this one's evaluation. I don't mind, but why this one? Because he wants to be a scout. Our ranks are filled with men and women capable of breaking chains and putting slavers to the sword. But scouting? We're few with the nose for that. Which is why we still rely so heavily on Gav. And since he accompanies you on so many of your missions, I thought you might be better placed to recognize the traits in him that we should look for in those who'd fill his boots. Sounds reasonable. So you're happy to oversee the boys' test? One can never have too many scouts. Truer words, Sid. I'll let the Initiate know that you'll be attending his trial and that he is to proceed directly to Northreach in readiness. No time like the present, eh? No time like the present. I'll await you there. Northreach. I don't suppose they could have chosen somewhere closer. Vivian, I read your note, and I'd be happy to help you find the book you're looking for. Thank you, Clive. But tracking it down will not be easy. Are you sure? Please. You have always granted me your wisdom and insight whenever I asked. It's only right that I return the favor. Or at least attempt to. You are too kind. Alas, what I ask of you is rather more trying than delivering the odd lecture. I spoke with Harpocrates to see if he had any inkling as to where another copy might be found, but... But perhaps it is best that you hear the details from him. If you say so. Forgive me, Clive. For asking this of you but this book it set me on the path to becoming who i am today its importance cannot be overstated what do you think happened to miss mid at all i heard sid you have to help us with what you didn't take apart another of mid's contraptions did you no well yes but that's not what we want to talk to you about. It's Miss Mididol. She's been acting strange. Very strange. She's barely ever around. When she is, she acts like we aren't even there. Her head's in a crowd. In the clouds. And that's what I said. In the clouds. Well, she does have a lot on her mind. When did you last see her? Um, not long ago. Huh. Right after she got back from saving you from Stone Ear. Then it's probably just about the Enterprise. It did take quite a battering on the way there and back. You didn't break it, did you, Sid? You really should be more careful around Miss Mididol's invention. Oh, don't listen to her. Even if you did break the Enterprise, you could put it back together, couldn't you? But who's gonna put Miss Mididol back together? She seems really sad. Why don't I go and see if I can cheer her up? You do that? For us? She's in her dungeon. Don't scare him. It's not a real dungeon. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> yes, mid-sex adventure dungeon, yes. There's someone up here. I will not let them be forgotten. Sid, may I have a moment? Of course. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now. And I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. I was raised in an orphanage. The Badbach Conservatory. Or rather, I was held captive there. It was not a place of nurture. It existed solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. We were tortured. Until we feared no pain. Tormented. Until our hearts turned to stone. And few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I can't imagine. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They cannot fade away, faceless and forgotten. The Institute was run with military precision. Every child measured, every name recorded, every death logged with meticulous care. Sid, allow me to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters might live on. 
You are a good friend, but the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Bad Back and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. The De Grace. Hidden in a forest. Overlooking the plains. Now I found it. All right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. Ed, if you have a... Ah! That's it! I knew it! The answer was right here under my arse all along! If this doesn't steer to the skies, nothing will! To the skies? You aren't trying to give the Enterprise wings, are you? What else would I be doing? The children seem to think you're avoiding them. They're worried about you. Is this really so important that you need to shut yourself away from everyone? The Enterprise is already the fastest ship in the realm, and that's with the sea beneath her. But what if she weren't bound to the waves? What if she weren't bound to anything at all? It's not fair. The gods get the skies all to themselves, so I'm going to do something about it. The Fallen had their chance, but they relied too much on magic. And see where that got them, but not me. I've discovered how to do it without. Well, almost. First, I need to make a prototype. And is that a one-woman job? Are you volunteering? <laughs> I'll have you know the Enterprise is my baby. But if a godfather's offering to lend a hand, I'd be happy to take it. First, I'll need oil. And not just some old drippings from Miss Molly's spits in the tub and crown. Refined stuff, like they make in Ordill. Then I'll need some bone or shell. Light. Strong. Preferably no longer attached to the beast it belongs to. If it's beast bones you're after... I'm sure the curse breakers will know where you might find some. No, they'll know where you might find some. You're the one who offered to help, remember? I should speak with one of the curse breakers before I set off for Old Hill. See if I can't find this bone while I'm there as well. Yeah. Pining for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Sade, that's why. On the day brought him home. That long ago. And you're only thinking to ask this now? <sighs> Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you asked. Clap that there iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf. Torn away from his icons and all, Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone? You find what it is you're looking for. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Toggle. Sorry for making you wait so long. <coughs> Let's get that thing off you. <coughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. Indeed. You miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? <coughs> you want me to go with you somewhere? <coughs> Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rummed his belly these past ten summers. Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. <laughs> Go on now. <laughs> I love Karen. Where to then, Toggle? Ah, Clive, my boy. What a pleasure it is to see you. Hippocrates. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. And you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. You've been talking to Vivian. Right as always. But she didn't seem keen to tell me very much. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. And yet I gather it did naught to dissuade her. Clive. If the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? Coveters of secrets, a clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. One such text being the tome Vivian seeks, chronicling as it does the true history of the enslavement of bearers, a tale which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known, or so rumor has it. I've never actually read the thing, 
or even set eyes on it for that matter. How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized, be it books, inventions, or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Which would explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest or ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. And my hunt was doomed from the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I'd pluck it from thin air? Not from thin air, no. From ash. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm, but rather less so across the strait. I have a friend, well, I had a friend, in the village of Garnick, a collector of rare tomes, upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark, and no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit. <laughs> Lots of quests to Walud, it seems. All right, Toggle. Where are you taking me? I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. Do you have a better hint for me? Unless... You've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west. Toward Rosaria. Why don't we try the rookery? I haven't been to the island in... almost 20 years. To port is older, then. Fingers crossed the old mooring is still there. All right, Sid. Come to buy us a round, have you? Only if you earn it. Mid needs a piece of light but durable bone for her next project. You've encountered your share of beasts on your travels across the realm. Any ideas? Most bones are the same. Whack them hard enough and they'll break. If it's durability you're looking for, shell will serve you better. I do. And I know to give them a wide berth. Will any old adamantus do? Well... With shells, the older the harder. There's a rumor of an ancient Adamantus down in Carava, near Old Bidza, or what's left of the village, anyway. But don't expect to make quick work of the bastard. There's a reason it's lived as long as it has. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. The entire village looks abandoned. Now, which house would a bookworm live in? I mean, any of them? This is a Royal Army logbook. <laughs> His interests were certainly varied. Found it. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you from a distance, so to speak. Ha! Ah. Subtle, I know who you are. Then we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make, but by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Really, guys? Okay. Let's see, shall we?
Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. He's not wrong. So you're trying to control the truth. We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Hmm. Wait. And he's already gone. Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. This must be the orphanage. Hopefully the registry is still here. Yep. Locked. I should look around some more before I start breaking down doors. Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Mm, yeah. Disposed of. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. Reads like a suicide note. Did the director go through with his plan? There's only one way to find out. A forked white tree. This must be the place. Could he really be buried here? There's something hidden among the roots. Let's see. This must be the registry. Oh my god. So many names. This place was a slaughterhouse. And where is the architect of all this misery? I think I found him. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. Let's get the registry back to Herman. Mm. Doris is waiting for me near Belmont Dark. The longer she's out in the open, the more likely she is to be found by Akashic. I need to hurry. Mm. All right. I remember they said earlier this place wasn't on Vivian's map. None manning the gates. No, it's a different story inside, though. The corridors are crawling with Akashic. Most likely guards left behind when the wardens ran. If Chadwick was being held here. I worry that he may already be. Don't give up hope just yet, but let's move quickly. Let me check the ground floor. The ether's thick is there. Then I'll search the upper level. Good luck, Sid. Stay safe. Mm. Just how bad are the floods inside the walls? Bad enough to turn a bearer? I hope not. I'm risking a lot just being here. Hmm. So this place was no ordinary prison, and I doubt they'll have taken the creature with them when they fled.
minimal loss of Waluda lives. And what happens when they run out of bearers? Even the Imperials take better care of their branded than that. Yeah. Feeding bearers to it. This is even worse than I'd feared. Nothing but a Kashik down here. Hopefully things are looking better upstairs. I should go and see how Doris is getting on. No luck downstairs. But I did find out that this place was more than just a prison. Something far more sinister was happening here. I know. I've been reading some of these documents, and it can't be true, can it? Bearers die every day in service of their masters, but this, this is so much worse. Pitting bearers against a wild beast armed with nothing but their wits? And all in order to bring about more death. And not just those who could fight, but the elderly, children even, and those who wouldn't or couldn't were disposed of. Whatever that means. I'm afraid it means they were fed to the monstrosity they kept here. Then we're too late. And I was a fool to bring you here. Don't say that. Did you find anything else? A key. But it doesn't fit any of the locks on this floor. Perhaps it will fit one of the doors downstairs. There's a corridor I haven't searched yet. Finish up here, then come and find me when you're ready. All right. Yeah, I'm willing to bet whatever this monster is, I'm gonna have to fight it. Let's see what we can find down here. Yeah. I'm willing to bet it's gonna be whatever that monster is. Hmm. Ah! survivors some of the guards they're still here but something's wrong with them everyone else was eaten by the monster <sighs> of course there were thanks the founder well at least we found someone it was worth our coming but i'd rather we didn't linger be ready ready when you are you poor thing he must have been terrified Theatrix sent you. What? He fought the monster. Distracted it so I could run away. He must have sent you. He promised to free the others too. Where is he? He opened your cell, didn't he? He wouldn't be here otherwise. Chadwick. Oh no. Was that? Monster's back! We have to get out of here. Doris, keep the girl safe. All right. You put that bearer-eating bastard in the ground. I plan to. Oh. It's out there waiting for me. I can't let it live. Not if it's got a taste for bearers. Hmm, that's a notorious mark, too. Got it. <sighs> Finally. Sid, are you hurt? I'm fine. I think. 
Oh no. No. What is it? A diary. I gave it to Chadwick before we went our separate ways. He was here. Do you think that creature? I'm sure he fought bravely to the last. The girl is safe thanks to him. Chadwick. You fool. Come on. We have to get her back to the hideaway. We don't want his sacrifice to have been in vain. No. Of course not. I'll see that she's looked after from now on. It's the least I can do. From what I hear, you've barely left the girl's side in days. I hope she's recovering from her ordeal. She is. Slowly, but surely. She's far tougher than she looks. I thank the flames we found her. I know. But we did. I'm sorry we weren't able to save Chadwick. There's no need to apologize. Without your help, I would never have found out what happened to him. How he fought to the bitter end to save her. To save Heide Marie. That's the man I remember. The man I thought of as a brother. I wish I could have met him. I'd like to hear more about your past. If you don't mind, that is. Of course. You already met my former master. She trained Chadwick and I to do two things. Kill and obey. We were supposed to be sold to the highest bidder when the time came. But no bid was ever high enough to convince her to part with us. For years, we were her daggers in the shadows. But we could never quite shake our doubts about the things she made us do. And then, one day, we just couldn't do them anymore. So we escaped. But staying together was out of the question. They would have found us too easily. After so many years of training, the pull to serve was always strong. It scared me to think he might have taken another master, become a dagger in someone else's hand. But even in captivity, the battles he fought were his own. And he died not as someone's tool, but as a hero. Heide Marie is proof of that. Bearers can cast off their shackles, and the curse breakers will show them how. I'll fight until my dying breath to see it done. For Chadwick, and for all of us. Thank you, Doris. We'll be counting on you. Yep. I may as well turn in a couple of the other quests while I'm here. I hear that you traveled to Ash. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. I may the bearer register. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. Once we lost my friends, my light in those dark times, I can still remember their faces like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return, no explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Of their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity. Were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. Vivian, I found it. 
The book you lost. You... You found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these executors, and I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something, that the truth is just a matter of collective belief, and that if enough people believe a lie, that lie becomes the truth. It does, but it also means that the truth is not immutable that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers prove... You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... One of us. Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather... closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. Yeah, I had thought that, um, it was odd that, like, you know, I, you know, I, I had always thought that, like, the bearers were supposed to be the masters, while the common people should have, like, like, the whole system was backwards, and this literally proves it, which is fucking crazy. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. Tale to tell. Lawsman Harpocrates. I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. You spoke of making amends with Dion. But I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course. Before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the dragoons. His studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. 
I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tale. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. I'm nervous. Well met, Sid. This is the initiate. Ember, present yourself. At your service, master. Please, just Sid. There are no masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. The sergeant says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face them. Just like the man who saved my life. Who would that be? Gav. It was him who found me and freed me. No magic, no support, just one man and his nose. Came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. And I've been training ever since. So that one day, I can be someone's saviour, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. So, what? Have I passed? You haven't even started yet. Now listen. Not far from here is an Imperial lookout, Eastwatch. The guards there record all their sightings in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You'll need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape, all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. Know my limits, right. I won't let you down. It shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather eye on him all the same, would you? On my way. All right, Ember. Impress me. Yes. Impress me and my chocobo. Yeah, I'm definitely not following you on my gigantic riding bird. These are clean kills. Perhaps young Ember really is ready. Maybe not. Damn it. Ember, draw your sword! Uh, uh, oh God! Then run! Uh, um. If you want him, you'll have to go through me. And my brother the Phoenix, we're both here. Oh, and my badass, um, Frostwolf. Ember, are you... Gone. Of course. Scouts really are a rare breed. They are. <sighs> Back to Northreach it is, then. I didn't expect you back so soon. Where is Ember? How did he fear? I... thought I'd find him with you. He must have fled. I followed him to Eastwatch, where I found him being set upon by a wild Avis. He was just standing there. Didn't even draw his sword. I had to step in and take care of things. But by the time I had, he was nowhere to be seen. I assumed he'd set off in your direction, but... 
Apparently not. Oh. I'm sorry, Sid. I knew the boy had a nervous streak, but he seemed like... The right man for the job? I believe this is the logbook you tasked me with retrieving. Eh? How did you... Don't you tell me you breached the tower while Sid was busy saving your skin. What? Wasn't that what you asked me to do? To bring the thing back without getting caught? He has you then, is there? And he did it all on his own. But Sid... He did what he thought was best. And now I have to decide whether I agree. Of course. We'll await your evaluation back at the hideaway. Don't you leave my sight. Yes, Sergeant. <sighs> this won't be an easy decision. Yeah. He technically did it, but not really in the best way. Do you have a moment, Clive? What is it? It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. His eminence has assumed full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortification. The town was left all but unguarded, so Philippe was compelled to form a citizen's watch to fill the void. And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for bodies. So I was wondering if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier, if only for a few nights. Of course. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed at... Where can I find the mistress of this establishment? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? My name is Sabine, and it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Very well. Let us speak. I trust you'll forgive me, Clyde. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please, proceed. As you know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you in objecting to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plan. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. No, he must be made to face the consequences of his actions. And who would make him do this? I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Does that not seem a trifle... drastic? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed, my father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. <sighs> He's always been like this, scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him by all possible means. Fight him? No. My purpose is to quell the tension in Northreach, not to stoke it. Respectfully, my lady. Our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be one round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer, if you will extend me the same courtesy. I bid you good day. She certainly has spirit. Indeed. But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve, which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. I'm sorry. Where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch, but perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. <laughs> Under new management too, eh? So you are content to abandon the people to their fates? I'm not abandoning anyone to anything. Please, I beseech you. If you are a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends. 
And someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help. She's kind of a Karen. She cornered you too, then. Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the dame to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway, what brings you here? Our mutual friend thought you might welcome some help. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> right as always. In fact, you're just the man. We've had some reports, you see. Sightings of, uh, you know what. They're back. Seems that way. All over, too. We haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but if you're willing, you could go and see what's what. Right. Where should I look? You know Grieger's Weep? One of the sightings places them somewhere on its shores. I'm on my way. Thank you, Clive. I'll look into one of the other sightings. Let's rendezvous back here later. Damn it. The reports were true. I need to stop them before they get to the town. Yeah. And these aren't just Akashic. These are Ultimas, you know, buddies. And there we are. Call that a test, Ultima. Clive, it's me. What's up? Are you all right? I am. But it seems the reports were true. The thralls have returned. I dispatched the few that I found, though. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? They all came from the north last time. We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other, but from both? Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though, just to be sure. You head back to Northreach. I want you there just in case war breaks out while I'm away. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the town, stirring up ill feeling towards her father. But she'll have her marching on the barracks if we're not careful. What? This is exactly what the Dane was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, all right? Don't worry, I'm not like you. One sniff of those things, and I'm running back to town screaming blue murder. <laughs> I like him. Do you not see, Father? The people of Northreach have given enough, and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. Without their sword, how will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. A new... Empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as Great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, Father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. <laughs> you must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore. You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted. Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own, as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions. And not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla. Yes, I know who you are. The slut of Twinside who bedded a branded. <gasps> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer. Over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! 
I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. Oh, so fuck you. We didn't know. Work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvant and there make our stand. Did you hear me? That was an order! While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love. Together, for Northreach! You heard the dame? What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates, archers to the roofs. Quickly, come on! But she is but a common whore, yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell. Ha! Ha ha! Just gonna take this opportunity to say sex work is real work. The men have their orders, and they look like following them. I got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thralls strike from, there'll be someone there to meet them. Thank you, Philippe. Rest assured, the people will play their part. The herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, milady. I'll play my part too. You still want for numbers. Unlike the enemy. I only hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe. Can I leave the south in your hands? I doubt the thralls by the lake were the last of their number. Of course. I'll lead a party down that way so we don't get taken by surprise. What about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I fought a few of these things. And while I can't promise to hold them all back, I should be able to thin the herd. All right. Thank you. Both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame. You don't have to be born a noble to be a noble person, you know? The dame is as noble as they come. I want steel in the hands of Nobility man. is something that people are born with and not born into. Let's do it. There are so many of them. <laughs> not for long. Is it over? No. It's only just begun. There we go. <sighs> that looks to be the last of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. And Joshua! He's here too! <laughs> Clive, it's good to see you. And you, the road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks, but nothing the girls of the Vale can't put right. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived, for the time being at least. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right, and I was wrong. About everything, I had thought that the only way to unite the people was under the banner of empire. That without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart. To be borne hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together. Not by force, nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority, but by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel. Because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, your eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory, while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. <laughs> you have the right of it again, as did you, Sabine. His radiance said it himself. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too, Father. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people felt. How I felt. 
but my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my doing. I should have listened to you. To all of you. Your eminence, your ladyship. I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions, but I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity, not just for Northreach, but for the entire realm. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together. Will you join us in the... Yes. We shall. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in need of relief, and today there are more than ever before. <laughs> God, I love her. Madam Isabel is a rare soul indeed. In these dark times, I see that it is not men like me who should lead the realm. But women like her. You're right. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. Forgive me for saying so, my lady. But you still do. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. We just have to work together. And that goes for you, too. You're one of us now. One of you. Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning. Not only for Sandbreck, but for us. Well, since there's nothing more to be done here, I should see if Isabel needs any help moving the wounded. <laughs> Can we get you anything? <laughs> I saw that uh, one guy was like, "Can I get you anything? A room at the veil would be nice." <laughs> How goes the treatment of the wounded? I'd be happy to man one end of a stretcher if it would help. <laughs> You've helped quite enough for one day, Clive. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh, but I must. After all you've done for this town, it is the very least you deserve. Tell me, if Northreach had fallen, what would you have done? A woman of your means could find a home anywhere in the realm, but I sense you would rather have died here. It's a long story. For you, madame, I have all the time in the world. Very well. Long ago, I had a life in the Crystalline Dominion. I was Carla then, courtesan to the nobility. So sought after was I that it was only they who could afford my time. Alas, those halcyon days were not to last. For naive as I was, I fell in love with a bearer. He was my master's guard, the gentlest man I have ever known. After they discovered us together, he was whipped bloody and forbidden from ever looking at me again. And so we fled. Not that we had anywhere to flee to. We wandered, aimless and starving. Half dreading, half praying that the next day would be our last. Until we found ourselves here, in Northreach. It was the veil that took us in, that fed us, clothed us, and healed our hurts. Those that could be healed at least. My love was already too far gone. He passed away. He did. Not long after we arrived. But at least we were able to share a few moments of peace before the end. It was the greatest gift I have ever received. But the generosity of this town and her people did not end there. The men and women of the Vale supported me through my grief. Shared in it. Though I was still a stranger to them. They treated me like a sister. And so I swore that I would always do the same, that I would return the kindness that Northreach showed me, that I would repay my debt to the Vale. Thank you, Isabel, for sharing this with me. <laughs> You're a lot like him, you know. Perhaps that is why I have such a soft spot for Makes you. sense. Never stop fighting, Clive, and I shan't either. I know that it will not be easy to keep Northreach together. But our efforts will be rewarded. Just look at us now. The people, the soldiers, even the Duke of Oriflam and his daughter, all united in defense of this town that we have come to call our home. And what of you? Can we count on your support too? Always. <laughs> that was a good one. I liked it. 
Oh no. Turncoats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. I don't need your... Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Men, finish him. Finish me? Oh, sir, at least buy me dinner first. Well, that was easy. A little longer than I'd have liked. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors. I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore, but I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My Lord Marquis. Or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am. All the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos, but I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now, we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together. Even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, uh, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either, and I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Oh, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. <laughs> Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my Lord Marquis, your Lord Uncle bade me escort the Field Marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my Lord. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least. Ah. It looks like we found him. If Mid needs another, she can come and get it herself. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so we're apparently going to read the will now. Your Grace, my Lord, I trust your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from Father. Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my Lord. 
I know that I ask much of you in the coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future for our duchy and our family. Yet, even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of the blight still looms. Only with all Rosaria striving as one, we at l might we at last overcome it. I have made plans to see us through, but such are the obstacles that stand in our way. It shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have the strength, the courage, and the will to do so. This is an um, this is an arduous inheritance. So I offer you another, that you might be reminded of the love and the faith that I hold for both of you, your father. An inheritance. It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the Duchy, Your Grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the Burning Quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His Grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, and the founding of a new university to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He, he truly was a forward thinker. To see men and bearers treated as equal, to see centuries of common wisdom overturned small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime but he thought it achievable nonetheless had he not he would never have written this message nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides those who would have stood with you shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court it's a pity only they are still with us mm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath, but one at least remains, and she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering his grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it, or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, Your Grace. Thank you, Cyril. Shall we then? My lord, Your Grace. I... I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha. Retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude for your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady. Perhaps you could explain a little more? What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself, but it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. I see. It saddens me to bring them before you, as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress, but with his grace long since gone, and the stone left unclaimed. I had little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the heartstone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you. 
Lady Godetha. What say you, Clive? What else? Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heartstone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of Elder Griffins, you see. We do at least know where to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, Yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. What say you, Joshua? What else? Yeah, we gonna kill a griffin. Hmm, there's another quest from Cyril. Lord Marquis. If you have a moment. What is it, sir? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait in order to pursue a new avenue of inquiry in our ongoing investigation. He sent an owl some while ago, but we have heard naught from him since. Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. We believe it may have some connection to the Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion that worshipped Ultima as its god. By gaining an understanding of this new faith, we hoped to learn more of the Circle's original beliefs. And so you sent one of your brothers to Ash? A continent teeming with orcs and Akashic. Fully cognizant of the risks, yes. I entrusted the mission to one of the most able of our order, the Third Chair, a master of the arts of combat, and survival both. Though he has been silent for some days now, I have thus far refrained from sending any others in search of him, lest they be lost in turn. Yet, it seemed only right to inform you of the situation, given your unique experience of the perils of Ash. For as you so earnestly advised me, it would not do to abandon a man to his fate. When he might yet be saved. Ah. Uh. He would not. But Ash is a big place. Can you be any more specific? Perhaps. The last owl I received from him mentioned a village where he had heard the cult were wont to assemble. Mickleberg was its name. It lies in the southern reaches of Walud. If aught ill befell him, I expect it did so there. All right. I'll see what I can do. You are much too kind, my lord. Go then, with my hopes. And may the Firebird's flame ever burn in your heart. Well, it seems at least they are kinda learning. I mean, after all, they didn't send like a bunch of people to do Let's this go. mission. They, you know, refrained from it because of Clive's, you know, earnestness. I think I found it. There it is. The House Rossfield. There we go. Is this the Heartstone? I expect Lady Godetha will know. Oh, thank the founder you were safe. The Griffin is slain then. And a heartstone claimed. Yes, this radiant luster, like frozen flame, it is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, your father would be so proud. Lady Godetha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. It feels nice honoring their father. He seemed like a great man. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours, after all. Heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion, and the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. 
Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together, as Phoenix and Shield, as brothers in arms. Only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His Grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Goddatha, for remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So... How were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands, of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewelry be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the griffin, thinking I might claim the heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Goddatha, on behalf of my father and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your Grace, for coming back to us, for giving my service meaning. suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff. Let him see that you have received his blessing and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? Should we pay your father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since, since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it, for it too is a part of your inheritance, and I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Mm. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. He's waiting. Unwavering will and an unbreakable bond. Do you really think we're strong enough? To save the world? Of course. To have overcome father's political enemies. Of that I'm less certain. <laughs> Especially knowing what we know now. What mother was truly capable of. But perhaps these bands would have helped. Knowing he was with us would have made all the difference. It's just back there. Yeah. Father always fought for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized. I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the fighting for me. No matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart, never looked back, never stopped fighting. To me, he was the greatest of men. been trying to live up to his ideals ever since.
We all have, Clive. We all have. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Even if it meant standing against the very gods in the heavens. Yep. I shall be borrowing this, Father, if I may. That you might watch over us as we follow in your footsteps. Ha. <laughs> ah. I love it when when like, you know, stuff like that happens in stories where you can tell that you know, we won't lay you down. Their father is watching over them in the afterlife. Onward then. Onward. To the end and to a new beginning. Joshua has joined Clive's party and will remain with him until departing for Origin. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Quinton, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on, then. Propose. <laughs> yeah, you are quite a catch, Quinton. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive, the people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them you'll have to find someone else i'm sorry to hear that <laughs> so am i and why might that be what he's asking how's it any different to what you've done so far they want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves that's what you do best <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about we'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled you know we will it's not that then what is it you said yourself we're family don't you trust us you know that's not what i'm then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves. And if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <laughs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Porter's older. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. <laughs> My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Torgal, where are we going, buddy? Apparently we're getting on a boat. I am concerned. It's still here. After all these years, not smaller than I remember. And you're a lot bigger. You might have to swim, boy. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. <laughs> you two go on without me. I doubt that boat will hold a third. If you're sure, we won't be long. Hop in, boy. <laughs> This place hasn't changed at all. The rookery's right through those trees. Come on. Race you there? I bet I could still beat you. <laughs> they probably played here. This was our hideaway, wasn't it, Torgal?
Coming here helped me to forget who I was. Or wasn't. Prince. Shield. Son his mother could love. Had I been any one of those things? Perhaps. What is it, boy? <laughs> this is all from the castle. And Phoenix Gate. Did you bring these here? His oh, barring sword. Well, well. <laughs> you never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? Oh, Torgal. <laughs> Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. <laughs> That's not the way back to the boat, Toggle. All right, all right. I'm coming. <laughs> I think I know where we're going. Oh my god, you can see the castle from here. talk about the importance of putting the past behind you but without it we wouldn't be who we are today exactly and we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow come on toggle let's go home that was good hey there joshua sorry for the wait we're ready It's oil. After what happened here, it's a miracle there was any left at all. Yeah. I better get these materials to Mint so she can finish her prototype. Yep. Uncle, I bring good news. The field marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has. I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier. Uncle, assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, 
The old battle axe was so pleased, she had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new move. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen, perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... How dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this... Fine! Upstanding young gentleman! Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <laughs> God, I love Quentin, though. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hand, but the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <laughs> <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, my quill. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I still love Byron so much. Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities. That you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you. Clive, I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Dude, Byron has been the most badass character in the whole game since he first appeared. I love that man. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. Welcome back. Trip wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. No, they most certainly did not. Uh, I'll give him another chance. Amber lost his nerve in the face of a beast of prey, but he didn't lose heart. He pressed on, and he achieved his aim. And is that not what we ask of our scouts? Indeed it is. 
Thank you for your honest appraisal, Sid. The fact remains, however, that Ember will not always have a battle-hardened warrior on hand to pluck him from the jaws of peril. All I have gleaned from this trial is that without someone watching his back, Ember is little more than a liability. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade, and any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conk and a half. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Fine. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. I'll show you. Just you wait. Glad I gave him another chance. Delft as a brush, that one. But his heart's in the right place. <laughs> Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. That time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. Good night. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will ya? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'd be asking for a day off. <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. <laughs> Forgive me, Sid. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things rarely do these days, but that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I will, Sid. Thank you. Mid? Tell me this is all you need. Ah, oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero <sighs> and a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait, the children. When they took apart your scales, there was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They didn't use it when we put the scales back together. The young'uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Children, I need the cog wheel. Sid, is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! It is. Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! We remember. We saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. That's not good. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. That's good to know. Look. I found it. Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your... hoard. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that could have been a plot hole, but they made the cogwheel into something that wasn't well, a plot hole. Did they have it? They did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see. I am concerned. That should do her. I 
like I was nothing. wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad. I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. You're not wrong. People will lose their homes, children, their mums, and their dads. Like I lost mine. Yeah. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. <laughs> People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. Whoa. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one. So that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it is true that some inventions were better off not being invented. I mean, you know, we only have nuclear weapons because of, oh. you know... Scientists trying to make the world a better place. Imagine what would have happened if they decided not to work on it, you know? Imagine how many people would have lived. At the same time, imagine the world we would live in. The United States might not have won the war. We might not even exist right now, so... There's no way to say whether it's good or bad. It just is. If I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt... I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <sighs> My dad always said, dream big. But it ain't the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. <laughs> hmm, concerned for Jill, huh? If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Shouldn't you go and speak to Jill? Wouldn't that make more sense? Oh, you all right? Something troubling you? Oh, no more than usual. It's just 
Yeah, this baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I'll let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that Ed is due any day now, and I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Hmm. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? A good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's no luck yet in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I'd try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need, a feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with traveling traders plying the northern border. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. Nice. <laughs> Silver linings. Joshua. I read your message. You're right. Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different, but... Since we've returned from Drake's spine, I've felt it more and more. I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. To let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever, that you still need her. But how to do that? When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the duchy, and Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill? To see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. In the rain. <laughs> A thunderstorm forced us to take refuge in a grove of oaks before we'd even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say, he was none too pleased. Then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in Southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits? I'm saying we should first go and see if there are actually still any snow daisies left. <laughs> what would you do without me, Clive? <laughs> you are right, Joshua. What would we do without you, buddy? Oh, no. This is the place, but... I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What do we do now? We keep looking. Man's Hill cannot be the only place where snow daisies grow. Perhaps, but it's the only place I know of. You. Then why not ask someone who might know of another? Someone at the backyard. To the hideaway, then. Sir, I am trying to get my friend Dion some flowers, god damn it! Yay, I got the flower. Might this be Mickleburg? Straight home now. Hmm. Whoa. There are actually people here. These people aren't turned. The village seems safe enough, at least. Here be Ross Fields. Visit all areas on the map and local maps. Cool. What is going on here? Ah. Did you, too, heed the call? Heed the call? No, I... I came here looking for someone. To be honest, I... I wasn't sure I'd find him here. Let alone all of you. Mm, is that so? What are you doing here? Is this where you live? It is my home. The others, they 
They heeded the call. You keep saying that. What do you mean? They came here to perform the rite. Just as King Barnabas instructed. This village is their altar, where they shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord. Give themselves. Oh, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Let us be reborn in your loving arms. Free us from the torment of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Forgive me. But did another foreigner like me come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the traveler from Stone? Yes. He's staying at my house. Toward the rear of the village. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. <sighs> At least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him. Yeah. Excuse me. Are you with the Undying? I am. And so it would appear, are you? Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken. You're not. That's right. And you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. Then I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill, much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. Oh, no. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? devote themselves to the veneration of their lord with a fervor I have never seen before. Praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him, serve him with all of their beings. I too swore to devote my life to the service of my lord and master, but this... It is different. It is more. And so I would see it through to the end. See these people safe, that they might achieve their dream, that they might do their duty to their lord. Even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my lord. They would cast aside their wills and become a Kashyyyk. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. Forgive me, my lord. But I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Did you hear that, my lord? Something is happening. I'll go find out what. Stay here. An ether flood. An ether flood. Oh no. There must be something I can do. Echoes as well. Found her. Ready, brother? You know me, I always am. Ready. It's over.
We meet again. I've killed your kind before. Yep. No! He saved them. Devoting themselves to the service of their Lord. Just as I did when the Undying plucked me from the gutter and gave me a cause to believe in, a duty to serve was everything to me, and I would not deny them that fulfillment. Even if they must become a Kashik, in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings. Could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Look, my lord, they are saved. No, they're not. They've merely become empty husks. My Lord Marquis, welcome back. I am glad to see you hail and whole. I met with your third chair, Cyril. He bade me deliver his findings to you. Thank you, my lord. He remained in Ash? He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were... Believers in this savior cult. They prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their will. Then an ether flood came. And their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live, even knowing that that life was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty. A hero's end. Yeah. That I can agree with. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. It's true. <laughs> Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be, only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them, we protect them, and yes, we die for them, for better or worse. That is our creed. But he didn't die for your creed. He died to save them, and you still believe that what he did was right. I believe that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants, and this was his will the ultimate expression of it. <sighs> all right. I sadly have to I'd agree. I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. It's only right that I remember them. 
That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been and shall ever be the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. I pray with all my heart for your success. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gav needs. Excuse me. I'm looking for something. Oh, well, then I'm your man. A silver chocobo feather. Oh, or maybe not. Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago, claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo near some guide hovel not far from Eastpool. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. How do, traveller? You've the look of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Or perhaps a bawdy etching of a vicery? Uh, maybe another time. I'm looking for a silver chocobo feather. If that's the case, rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for a year. Word is, they were all hunted for their feathers. Uh. Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Didn't bring them much, nor their bow. If any are still out there, I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. Can I help you with summer? You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. But if it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh, yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. A silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds almost too good to be true. But... Since I'm already here. More tracks. And these look fresh. The Chocobo was here. And recently. Perhaps it still is. Well, I'll be damned. A silver feather. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Just borrowing a feather for my friend. Thank you. Let's get this back to Gav before they change their minds. <laughs> Let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies. It was no trouble at all. Oh, Still Ember. Clive, you're back. How'd you get on? Any luck? Any luck, you say? Crystal's crack. Is this what I think it is? Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. <laughs> right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I... Fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on East Pool's doorstep. They'd have had to move on before long. Even if you hadn't have turned up, they'll find a new home. Trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. Anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. Mm. Reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Like the fact I'm as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your Avis, Sid. I slew one of my own at last. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. There we go. Oh. 
What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. I will, I. I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him a burst. Huh. You can give it to yourself. Come on. Oh, There's a part of me that really wants her and uh, Gav to, you know, get together. But, you know, it doesn't always happen. At the very least, I think that he'll always be there to help her. Sometimes that's all you need is a good friend. Osman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. <sighs> you did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. Your Highness, would you do me the honor of accompanying me? No. It is time, then. <laughs> no. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates? No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more, all because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. And that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. <laughs> the end game side quests are definitely the best. Also, I love Dion's outfit, by the way. Master Harpocrates, pray. Accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tail? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environments in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of 
this truth. Master Harpocrates, I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Our roots do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him, not to mention the wives and tales. I shall plant their seeds, that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soil in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stolas quill, or more precisely, my Stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you, that one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Certainly will. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. <laughs> Ah, me lords. How are you feeling? Well, thank you. Is something wrong? Wrong? No, nothing like that. Uh, uh, what it is, is... Uh... Go on, please. It's beautiful. Did you make it? We did. I, ah, uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like, it's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a band's on the way. I, I, I mean, a, a baby. To let them know that they're part of the family, too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I, I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords, for everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Ah. <sighs> Clive, fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. I could be convinced. <laughs> Don't you think you've had enough? <laughs> no, we're celebrating. I'm gonna be a father. <laughs> I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Bit of light in these dark times. <laughs> it's true. It wasn't long after me tenth name day, my mum told us she was with child again. <laughs> I was over the fucking moon. I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over. What with me being the runt of the litter. Thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world 
that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister. And then I didn't. My hmm. whole family gone in a blink. Well, I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Great brother I turned out to be. I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. That's not true. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. <laughs> Have you finished? Maybe. <laughs> Do you know why you're our best scout? Yeah. Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like... Uh... That was only the once. Exactly. You learned from it. And here you are after founder knows how many missions stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. <laughs> that would be me. You're our brother, Gav. My brother. Yeah. They're great. The relationship between him and Gav is fantastic. Your brother. <laughs> Which means that when the time comes. I get your room and your sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so beautiful. I may have had one too many. You may have had ten too many. I said I was thirsty. Gotta get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive. What is it? Thanks for, you know. <laughs> I know. Gav is definitely our best mate. Oh. What brings you down from the heavens, Sid? I need your advice. Joshua and I are looking for a place where snow daisies grow. Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Thank you. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrek. Ah, oh, the fields beyond Northreach. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Whose shores border the meadows. Off we go, then. Oh, brother. Do you see them? I do. The flowers. And our friends. Boy. Oh, jeez. Let's hope this is the last one. Only one way to find out. Indeed. 
I beat that guy only for like a few wolves to show up. There we are. That was harder than I expected. But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. Oh, I'm gonna get a scene with Jill. That's great. It appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, is up to you. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? <laughs> Jill, there's something I'd like to show you. There is? And where might this something be? It's, uh... Not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? Oh. There are so many. This is what you wanted to show me. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. We've been worried about you. Joshua and I. Do you remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or <laughs> tried to? How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. <laughs> but I felt wonderful nonetheless. I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there, your hand in mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Oh. Before we broke camp, the morning after the storm, do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized... No matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. Huh. That, that you... That you would always come for me. And you have. Again and again. Where do you see us? When all this is over. Naked on a beach? Married? I don't know. Oh, come on! Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. <laughs> After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Then that's what you'll have. 
Okay. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do. Oh. That's so beautiful. I never was much good at garlands. But it'll have to do. I'll treasure it forever. Thank you, Clive. For this, the flowers, the... everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure. Best side quest in the whole game, hands down. Don't care what anyone says. We should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. Let them wonder. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. Jill has joined Klaus' party and will remain with him until uh, departing for origin. Oh, yeah, now it's Lubor's. Ah. Here to help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two, in fact. If it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Of course. The children would be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Lubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? There's been a flood in the Velcroy. A damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned. And they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing. But Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Ferda, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. All right. Nothing like the threat of intimate death to get people on your side, you know? Have to listen to me. They're coming. Why do they always have to make such a <gasps> Ah, it's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now. And they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill. Forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. It's no use. Words will not move. No. 
Then we must find another way to ensure Dalamel's survival. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. Good plan. Lord Ferda. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but... They wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid! Further! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor? I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Lubor is in need at this very moment. Come quickly! to believe me the akashic are coming they don't eat they don't sleep they don't tire and they don't care who they kill they're unlike anything that's come before there won't be no parley no mercy granted we may have saved the town once but this is different i do not ask that you forgive me but please Believe me, if you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! Huh? You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, yeah. yeah run! run. Yeah. Far, Just far away! Run! Yeah. Yeah. Run, yeah. run. Yeah. Just go, Bearer! Yeah. 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 Go on, then. Go on, then. Go on, Go on, Just go. Just go. Yeah. 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 Wait. Someone's coming. Bearer, yeah. go. Go on. Stop! You're hurting him! <laughs> what did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day, every day, making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like it doesn't even exist! Children speak the loudest, and they speak the truest. Lubo, we have heard enough. Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. So tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right then. <laughs> Fine. Uh, 
Gather round if you don't want to die. That was really good to see. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operation. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Delamil at all costs. Conrad. Can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor. And the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchants not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there. And Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated, root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. <laughs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalamil. Looks like everyone's ready. I'd better not keep them waiting. Indeed. Oh. Good, there's a... I forgot there was a teleporty thing right next to where I'm going. There it is. The flood. But what's waiting for us inside? Bad things. Hey, wow, I did finally end up here. I, I remember saying, like, back like when I first came here a long Can't time ago. One alive. Uh, it's great having Jill and Joshua here. There we go. The league is disbanded. <laughs> I should get back to Dalamil and see how the others fared. Sometime later. All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sir Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Cheritina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. We bloody did it. We saved Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did. And for that, we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Lubo. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be. Not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil. 
and I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together, just as we did today. Of course. You have our word. And secondly, you will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil. As you always have. Condition accepted. Well then, it seems my mayorship is all but confirmed. Do I get some sort of special hat? <laughs> we'll get you a different color turban or something. I'm not sure. How fickle fate can be. Not so long ago, I had resigned myself to leaving Dalamil in disgrace. And now, I find myself her leader. Here. For everything. Lubo. About the children. Fear not. You are, of course, relieved of your responsibility. I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste. <laughs> the kids were truly the heroes of this story. And level up. Very nice. Briar's Kiss signboard. Nice. Collect six signboards. Nice. I think that's all of the quests. I think they're all done. Oh my god. Maybe. Maybe. I think so. I still have some hunts to do, and uh, I'll do that uh, next. I'll get those done real quick, and then we shall call it good. First, I want to take a look at my collection, though. Oh, my goodness. I'm missing two. I don't know what the other two are. If there are no side quests left, what am I where am I supposed to get them? Oh, my God, it's huge. It's like the King of Behemoths. Oh, my God, it is the King of Behemoths. I had no idea. Oh, this is the last s rank monster, by the way. Four horsemen? Ow. I'm okay. I am not okay. I lied. Yeah, this thing definitely earned its, its s rank. Oh my god. Apocalypse? Oh my god. Yay! My tornado finished it off. Another Oracalcum. No match for you, I toggle. Yeah. Oh, Gizamaluk, huh? For any of you that don't remember, uh, Benedicta's last name was Harmon. It took me a second to remember that, too, so I was like, I was like, Harmon? I, I remember a Herman recently, but, uh, Harmon? And now I'm like, oh, right, Benedicta Harmon. It's been such a long time since we fought her. Ah. Reaper. 
Prince of Death. Huh. There we go. Dark Steel. I'm getting tired of these things. So am I. Too bad. If I do say so. Half past twilight. Create the uh, craft the legendary sword, Gotten Damarong. It looks pretty cool too. Let's get it in the sunlight. Oh yeah, that's badass. Obtain all available items from your patrons. Nice. Come again. All right. Straight home now. Here's the very last hunt. <laughs> Clear the hunt board. Ah, oh, I did it. Damn it. Deal. Well, this isn't at all foreboding. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Friends, that's it. All end game stuff is done. Finished. Joshua, Dion, and I are going to be heading toward the origin, and we're going to be finally finishing up the game in probably the next episode or two. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. I appreciate you being here with me. I know that uh, these last few episodes were kind of a slog because, you know, we were doing all these side quests and everything, but I really wanted to get them all done, and I in I'm so happy for those of you that came along on this journey with me. So, thanks again, everybody. And, as always, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, you guys know what to do by now. Like, comment, subscribe if you're not already, ring the bell for all the notifications is. And, until the finale, my friends, have yourselves a beautiful day, my beautiful, beautiful viewers. Hey there, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you consider subscribing to my Patreon so I can keep making awesome videos like the one you just saw. The link will be in the description below, and as always, have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day.